There is no shortage of opinions on the topic of dividends. You can even find individual creators on both sides of the same fight. Are dividends irrelevant or are dividends the key to investing success? With the increasing likelihood of recession on the horizon, your investing choices are more important than ever. In this video, we're going to look at the opposing dividend opinions and there are a lot out there. The question is whether or not dividends are truly good or bad in today's market environment. Where do you sit on the dividend spectrum? Let's get into it. The number one point that dividend doubters love to throw out there is there's nothing magical about dividends. No new money gets created when a dividend gets paid. It's not magic, I'm afraid. They'll say dividends aren't free money. They'll say the stock price drops by the amount of the dividend. The distribution of a dividend results in a reduction in share value. That must be true. There's no way around it. And that last part is true. The stock price does drop by the amount paid, but there is some magic and it's hiding in the math. The equation is simple. Initial stock price equals new stock price plus dividend. The company is giving you a portion of its worth in the form of a dividend. So what's the difference? Who cares if the company pays the dividend or not if your total money is the same? Well, in a vacuum, this would be true. But in reality, the stock price is not easy to validate like the dividend is. The company pays you a dividend based on its profits and you receive exactly that, a quantifiable amount of money. But who decides what the stock price is? The market decides. The market is made of individuals that do not always behave rationally. During an economic recession, the market is strongly affected by fear. When investors are fearful, stocks are priced lower than they should be. And it is subjective because future growth is a huge factor and nobody can see the future. So if you receive a dividend, then a part of your total is now a objective and the rest is subjective. If you do not receive a dividend, then 100% of your total is kind of subjective. The company might be a cool, tall glass of water in reality, but investors see something else. If you invest in a company that does not pay a dividend, then you are just along for the ride during a recession. Even though the company's profits are unaffected, you must wait until the market is no longer overcome by fear and the price of your shares returns to a fair price. But if the company pays a dividend that is based on profit, then you're percentage gain will be greater when the stock price is pushed lower. The second point that dividend doubters love to throw out there is lack of flexibility. I could sell more or less shares as needed. I am not allowing the company's dividend policy to dictate my spending. Investing in dividend stocks means that your spending habits will be controlled by a company's dividend policy. Instead, you can sell shares whenever you want cash. And it's the exact same thing as a company paying out a dividend. Well, once again, that first part is technically true. You can sell some of your shares when you need cash but it's not exactly the same. When a company pays out a 1% dividend, the share price drops by 1%. If a company does not pay a dividend, you could sell 1% of your shares. It is true, in a vacuum, you would end up with the same amount of money in your portfolio in both cases. That being said, let's put ourselves in the shoes of a newly retired guy. Guy has invested all of his money in companies that do not pay a dividend. Even if these are all great companies with robust profits, the whole stock market lost value during the Great Recession in 2000. If your portfolio has dropped 50%, do you really have the flexibility to sell twice as many shares as normal to afford your usual expenses? Just as much flexibility to poke your own eye? You will not want to do that. All things being equal, if Guy instead invested in dividend companies with robust profits, the share price may drop, but the dividends would continue. You would still have access to a portion of the company's profits without being forced to sell your shares at the worst time. My point here is that one strategy is not always is more flexible than the other. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. Of course, this dynamic won't play out as clean in real life. Some dividend companies will inevitably suspend or reduce their dividend, which would affect your profits. One path that many investors take is to invest in a dividend fund or ETF like the Dividend Aristocrats Fund. Investing in a fund gives you diversity without having to research a bunch of individual companies to invest in. For a company to be considered a dividend aristocrat, the company must be in the S&P 500 and have increased its dividend every year for 25 consecutive years. All of the dividend aristocrats have a strong track record for paying out a dividend even during a recession. The dividend aristocrats even tend to outperform the greater S&P 500, which brings me to my next point. The third point that dividend doubters will hit you with is that growth companies will outperform dividend companies over the long term. While it does sound sort of intuitive that a growth company would give you greater return, the historical data might surprise you. The yin and yang of investing are growth and value. They are two sides of the same coin. Growth companies are expensive compared to their current profits because people believe there will be growth in the future. Growth 
companies typically do not pay a dividend because they are using all of their extra cash to grow. Value companies, on the other hand, are cheap compared to their current profitability. Value companies are typically larger, stable, with less growth potential, and commonly pay a dividend. Over the last decade, we have seen growth outperform value, but it is important to remember that the battle between growth and value has been going on for a long time, and both sides have had their time in the sun. This chart by Bloomberg shows the previous decade has been a growth-dominated time period, but the decade before that tells a different story. Furthermore, the reversals in performance tend to coincide with inflection points of the economic cycle which we appear to be approaching. Value companies tend to perform better during economic recession and recovery, while growth companies tend to perform better during economic boom and slowdown. Always remember that past performance does not guarantee future returns. Do not let growth investing fanatics convince you that investing has been solved and growth will absolutely get you more total return in the long run. Whether growth or value performs better is cyclical and depends on the economic cycle. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you find this valuable, please help me by smashing the like button down below. My first goal is to help you make more money and save more money. My second goal is to monetize this channel within the first year. Thanks for the support. Investing in dividend companies gives you many unique benefits. A portion of your returns are insulated from extreme market downturns created by fear. This results in superior returns during a market crash. This feature is felt most by people who depend on their portfolios to fund their lifestyle. You do not want to be forced to sell shares at the bottom of the market. Receiving a dependable dividend allows you to afford your lifestyle without selling as many shares. Now that you agree that dividend paying companies belong in your portfolio, you need to know how to find them. Check out this video where I go over my three favorite dividend companies in this market. I go over all the tools and strategies that I use when I'm evaluating strong dividend paying companies. Till next time.